my god, he did it again. What up, guys? Today, I'm going to show you how to use a send track for a reverb or delay, and also how to automate the reverb and delay on the send track to sound good and be used properly on a vocal track. So let's get into it. So right here, I, I got a pretty just normal vocal that I got from Arcade just to uh, show you guys this. And th this is what the vocal sounds like right now. I know a place we can go. It'll be okay. And what I'm going to do, so we're going to add a send track. We'll actually add two of them. So we can right we we can right click on any of these tracks and go down here to send track and you'll see send one right here. I'm gonna label that verb for reverb. And then we're gonna add another one. And we're gonna label that delay. Um and you can come up here to track and go to insert track and add a send track from there, but right clicking is a uh, faster so what we're going to do is we'll go to effects you can use any reverb you want um but i'm going to use for this vocal we'll just go with our verb we'll keep it simple i'm a huge waves fan um there is a link in my description that will get you 10% off a Waves order, I do believe, so go check that out. All right. Now, we got this wet dry button right here. We want to leave that all the way wet, and we'll mess around with that here in just a second. Let's get the delay plugin on there. I like using the H delay, another good Waves plugin. Going to click BPM so it goes to so it syncs to the BPM. That's at 100 BPM, so We'll go one fourth. That should be good. Pull back the feedback a little bit, or else that'll just it'll delay forever. And I like to turn the analog off, or else it gives like this little low analog noise throughout the project that I'm just not a fan of. I don't like noisy stuff. But let's get on with the reverb first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to like this weird science looking shit <laughs> and click that down, and you'll see track volume. And then if you click track volume, because it, this is the automation line right here, or, or the automation track that pulls down. And you can automate the volume, the pan of things, and then you got the verb and delay right here for the sends. So when it comes to sends, it automatically adds them into the automation track because they are meant to be automated. So we'll go with verb, and you'll see over here the send level you can mess around with. But, um, Unless you just want to have it at a solid level throughout the whole track, um, you'll want to automate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this level all the way down to zero. going to stretch this out a little bit. We're going to zoom in here because we're going to choose where we want the reverb to be at. And I've come to realize that if you add reverb on just certain parts of a vocal it can make it sound really cool and like it it gives feeling you know instead of having reverb just on the whole thing because that can turn it into kind of like a, a wet mess um it sounds a lot better just to have it on certain parts and don't get me wrong like i mean a, a track can sound really good if you have like a little bit of reverb going on on all the tracks or just on a vocal track and just a little bit so you kind of give it space that it's living in that's also a good thing but you don't have to do that it's all about preference and how you want it to sound so what we're going to do to automate it here is I'm going to come over here and hit this little lock button to lock it. And that way the automation will move correctly. Now I'll, I'll show you what I'm meaning. It'll lock in what I'm going to do right here. So let's play this real quick. I know a place we can go. It'll be okay. All right. So let's, let's put a little bit on I right up here. So I'm going to make a little, a little point right there. And there's already a point at the front, so we don't got to make one up here unless I was going to put, you know, something right here or something like that. But we'll get rid of those two. 
So I'm going to make one right here and I'm going to have this reverb come in. And now I'm going to like make it kind of dramatic at first, just so I can hear the reverb really well. But I'm going to put it right here at the beginning of that first word. You know, and it kind of like fades out, but without the lock on, I... you don't hear the reverb. It doesn't, it doesn't move the reverb plugin without the lock on. So you want to turn the lock on and now you'll hear, I... no. we'll turn down this a little bit. I... No, please. So automation and send tracks, I believe are key key players in a great mix now so we we got one at the beginning i know a place we can go i'm gonna add one on go i know a place we can go it'll be okay and we'll add one on okay but kind of have it come in at k I know a place we can go, it'll be okay. Now, since we have the reverb where we want it, I'm going to mess around with the, re with the reverb a little bit and shape it how I like it. And with the reverb track, I'll add an EQ on there. Um... It gives me more control of how the reverb is going to sound instead of just having to use the EQ and dampness on here. I can use a separate EQ and control it more and shape it more. But I am going to shape it on here a little bit. I'm going to turn the dampness down in the low end. Um, I'm going to crank the dampness up a little bit in the high end. But then with this little EQ over here, I'm going to take these down because with the vocal, you want you know how i like to mix is a lot of things i'll chop off the high end just below where like i want the brightness of the vocal shining and that way the vocal is always kind of sitting on top of the mix because it's all about balancing frequencies and if you're taking out or if you're gonna like boost um the high end of the vocal then you want to take out some high end from like certain elements in the beat and whatnot and that way the vocal sits properly. It's all about balancing, but that's that's something we can get into in another video. So we're going to crank this down. Um, I'm going to take the early reflection off so it's not so wet. Maybe bring the timing down just a little bit. I know a place we can go. It'll be okay. And the size, it's like the room size. We're going to make that a little bit smaller now. Actually, I'm going to have the timing go up a little bit more, actually. I know a place we can go. It'll be okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this EQ, chop off all this low end. I'm going to chop off all the high end, too. Way down. I know a place we can go. It'll be okay. I... No place we can go, it'll be okay. I know a place we can go, it'll be okay. Now, one more thing just to kind of make it wider. Um, you can use a stereo imager. So like, this will make it really narrow. I know a place we can go. Like... It's essentially mono at that point. And then all the way out here is like ultra stereo. But it'll be wider. I know a place we can go. Makes the room feel a lot bigger. And then like when you squish it down like that to where it sounds narrow, it's like a hallway. But I want it wide and fat. Or you can use a doubler and just have the reverb on both sides. That works too. But I'm going to leave that there. So that is how you would use reverb on the send and automate it. Like I said, send tracks are, are key players. Now, you do the same thing with the delay. So we got the delay on there, we got it where we want, but we'd go right here where it says verb, then we go down to delay, then it switches over to the delay track. We'll repeat the process of bringing that down and locking that track. Then we'll do the same thing for the delays. I 
No place we can go. We'll probably just put it on the same words. Honestly, it, it's pretty easy, especially with one fourth delay. So. I know a place we can go. And actually, I think one eighth will sound better than one fourth. We wanted to be faster in that. I know a place we can go. You can ping pong it too. I know a place we can go. Or you can even, you know, you can really mess around. I know a place. And really do some wild shit. I know a place we can go. And crank the feedback all the way up or something. I know a place we can go. You know, just some fun stuff. And then I low pass, know low pass. And that sounds kind of cool, actually. Low pass. Yeah, we'll just do that for for shits and gigs. Why not? No place we can go. Then we'll add it on go again. I know a place we can go. It'll be okay. And we'll do like the tail end of okay. Okay. I know a place we can go. It'll be okay. And again, for the EQ, I'm going to add, I mean, for the EQ, for the delay, I'm going to add another EQ to give it its own balance too, but I'll probably do somewhat of the same uh, frequency shaping that I did with the reverb, um, but not take out as much of the high end. I know a place we can go, it'll be okay. Just to clear up some of the muddiness, we'll carve out some of that 500. I know a place we can go. It'll be okay. There we go. So yeah, you can do that with any effect. You can add any effect onto a send track and fiddle around with it, get really creative. When it comes to music, the world is yours, man. So try some crazy shit that you think might sound really bad and... In your head, you're like, I don't know if that makes sense. You'd be surprised what you'll come up with if you just try things. So if you guys like the video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I got more videos coming. Um, turn on the bell so you're notified when I do. And leave a comment down below. Let me know if this helped you learn anything. All right. Much love, you guys. Be sure to use those sends, man. It helps to mix a lot. I'll see you guys next time.